Hello, welcome to a special, a special video. This is my Dan Slots run on Amazing Spider-Man rant. Yes, this guy Dan Slot has been on this book now for basically almost nine on and off this book for almost nine years, despite the fact he's been regularly writing the book since 2010. However. <clears throat> From 2007 to, I'd say, about 2012, he's done pretty good stuff for the book. I mean, nothing's really bad about that part of his run. It's the stuff that's come out since 2013. I would say since the Dying Wish storyline, his run has gone completely downhill and completely in the dirt. Especially with the whole Super Spider-Man stuff. I mean, there are some nice things about the book, like the artwork is really good. And it's my was publishing twice a month. And the annuals were not written by Slot, they were written by Crystal's Gage. And the fact that the book had rotating artists. Uh, the problem with the book is, and why a lot of people don't like the book, is because almost every single character who appears in the book, with the exception of Spider Man, is written to look like a complete buffoon. Even the Avengers. Yes, twice the Avengers have shown up in the book. The first time they show the book, they're written as complete idiots. Like, they know something's wrong with Spider-Man. And all they do is do and all they do is a test and see if he was a, if he was a space phantom or if he's a scroll. And I'm like and I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people were reading that and like, really? That's it? You're not gonna check his freaking head? Check his brain. Heck, he wrote a piece he, heck, Peter Parker, who was a ghost at this point, was basically um. Uh, he was telling, he was he was he briefly took control when, when when Ock was asleep. He briefly took control of one hand, drew a spider with an octopus around it, and I thought basically that'd be some hint that Doctor Octopus is in control of the body, but no. Black Widow, one of the best female fighters in the Marvel comic universe. Thinks is a joke. She doesn't. She's not ready to be serious. Nope. This by like every other writer. Before and since that particular issue came out, I believe this was like Superior Spider-Man issue number. I think this was, was issue number six. I believe it was six or seven. I don't. I, it might have been. It might have been issue eight. So you bring in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and you make them look like complete idiots. Really slot. And then when Iron Man, who Iron Man was not really in the issues, I mean, Iron Man is written, like, as soon as Iron Man shows up in the Superior Venom storyline, he's like, oh, let's just let Iron Man be a complete genius. Let's look at this brain scan that was deleted by Spider Man. And of course, during the storyline, Spider Man, uh, like, toward the end of the storyline, Spider Man quits the Avengers. Yep, he quits. And then of course you have the brain swap. Uh, of course he had to get rid of uh, the ghost Peter. I'm not sure why he's been hanging around for about nine issues before he only got rid of him. And of course the character did come back gradually because what happened in issue 19. Um, another problem with Superior Spider-Man was when he brought it. Now, when he brought back certain characters like the Spider 29 or Stunner. In the case of Stunner, if let's say he had a reader that basically jumped onto the Spider-Man books like less like. At that point, about last two or three years, they probably have no idea who the heck Stunner is. They do a, he doesn't okay explaining who the heck she is. But if you have a long-time reader, yeah, they'll know who she is. But if it's a new reader, they have no idea who Stunner is. And also, they have no idea who freaking Spider-Man 29 is because he didn't freaking explain him. Heck, when, when, when Spider-Man 29 got his title back the following year... Peter David did a better job explaining who the heck this character is. Like, all people knew about him is that he was just a Spider-Man from the future. That was it. There was nothing about him. It's like he was expecting readers to know who exactly who he is, like every single reader. The problem is, not everybody knew he was. I knew who he was because I've actually read some of the older Spider-Man 29 books at that point. I have since read every single issue of the series. But, uh, 
But one of the biggest problems with Spider-Man 29, uh, Spirit Spider-Man, is not only the whole thing of bringing being a stunner in, in Spider-Man 29, not explaining who she is, and the characters are like complete buffoons. Sitting on a storyline for almost an entire series. What was this storyline? The whole thing with the Green Goblin. He sat on this thing for almost 20-ish, for almost like 30 issues he sat on this thing. And heck, even a recap of the issue after he came back, he um, just completely ignored the fact that the Green Goblin just came back. First time that anybody has seen the character in probably, what, about six years? Like five years maybe people have seen the character? And at this point, yeah, but the first time in three years that... Um, Actually, about four years since Nolan Osborn has physically appeared in the pages of me of of a Spider-Man book. He sits in the storyline for a long ass time, then he finally decides to do in the Goblin Nation story, which actually was a pretty good, decent story. Now, a lot of people point to certain points uh, of when Slot was going to leave because people now that people like his Spirit Spider-Man, like maybe he'll leave after Spirit Spider-Man's over. Nope. Maybe he'll leave after uh, Spider-Verse. People pointing to Spider-Verse like that could be a swan song. Nope. Some people thought when uh, the volume three was concluded that maybe Crystal's Gage might take over in the next volume. Nope. So some people are hoping that he might leave after Dead No More. But knowing Slot, it's probably going to be no. Another problem with his writing on the book, aside from the Spirit Spider-Man stuff, like I mentioned there, the guy doesn't care about developing the supporting characters, or any character for that matter. The only character he's ever developed is Anna Marie, because he created the character. Uh, he's developed Max Mandel a little bit. Um, yeah, he's given some character development, but not a lot of it. Uh, it's like... Like, one character, Sonia Jeffries, kind of an interesting character. He does virtually nothing with this character for about three years. And then have her become this co-president of Parker Industries. Doesn't do much after that. Tries to negotiate a deal with the ghost to try to sabotage the company. Like, destroy his one project. It's like, he creates certain characters and does nothing with them. I'm not talking about his Silver Surfer stuff. Silver Surfer stuff is awesome. I'm talking about his Spider-Man work. The guy has the most recent issue that's come out of the series, which is issue 14, which is actually issue 732 of Amazing Experiment. He has written 105 issues for the series. 105 issues with his name on it have been released for Amazing Experiment. 105. He has broken the record of how many issues anybody can write to Amazing Spider-Man. Everybody except Stan Lee. Stan Lee has written 122 issues, while he has written 105. So, who knows? And, there are some characters he just doesn't care to develop. Like, what about the longtime Spider-Man supporting characters, like Benny Brandt or the Daily Bugle? I mean, he's on some character on for Jameson, yeah, he's on some, but not a lot of it. Um, because people are not like his run so much. In fact, he's done nothing with the long-time supporting characters that people have known to be in long-time supporting characters Spider-Man. The other writers have scooped up these supporting characters and put them in the other books. Here's some examples. J. Jonah Jameson, one of the longest-running supporting characters of the Spider-Man titles is not an Amazing Spider-Man. I think his most recent appearance was, I think, at the start of this volume. Yeah. But guess where he's a supported character in? He's a supported character in Silk. That does make sense because she works for Fact Channel. Okay, that's fine. You also have someone like Ben Urick, who is a supported character not only Spider-Man and Daredevil. He hasn't appeared in Daredevil in years. Probably not since Brubaker's run. And where is he a supporting character now? Spider-Woman. Yep, Spider-Woman. Okay, what about Liz Allen? 
Spider-Man 299. He even took uh, Peter David, scooped her up, and tied Tiberius Stone and the Scorpion, and made them supporting characters of Spider-Man 299, because Sly has no idea what... Because Sly has really no plans to do anything with these characters. And here's the thing. Tiberius Stone is not one of his creations. You see, him showing up at the start of Slot's regular run, uh, official, when he started his official one, 648, that was not his first appearance. His first appearance was in Iron Man Volume 3, Number 1. Uh, as part of the Heroes uh, Return storyline, that was his first appearance. And he was a recurring character in Iron Man before he became a recurring character for Spider-Man. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Who else? Now, there's some characters I would like to see somebody do with these characters, like people who have appeared in Slot's run and just Slot does nothing with these characters. Like, uh, Betty Brandt, who showed up just recently in Amazing Spider-Man. I haven't seen this character in three years! What the heck has she been? It's like... And, of course, the Daily Bugle stuff has been completely... Has completely disappeared from the book. I mean, I think its only appearance was in the form of the papers they produced. Like, showing up at the start of Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the previous one for the series. And showing up recently... In an issue of, I think it was Civil War Choosing Sides. The paper that they put out makes appearance, but the office, the building, Robbie, those characters, they've all completely disappeared. It's like Slot has dropped the long term supporting characters in favor of his supporting characters. Okay, if you're going to write Amazing Spider Man, you're going to create characters, fine. But do something with the long-time supporting characters. Do something. I mean, you don't think it's not for Liz Allen is putting in charge of her own company. And taking Tiberius Stone with her. Okay, fine. That's not with her. Uh, Betty, have her go back to the other bugle, then not do much of anything after that until she showed up recently uh, in the most recent storyline. Or Harry Osborn. Up until, like, recently, no one had heard hide or hair from him in almost five years. I mean, exception for a forgettable cameo appearance in the Danger Zone storyline, I don't think anybody's done anything with this character since Origin of the Species. I'm not kidding. And this was... And here's the thing. The last time he showed up prior to Danger Zone, with the exception of Danger Zone, uh, as a regular full appearance, and Slot wrote the issue was in 647. That was the last time officially... That's my phone. Uh, that was the last time officially he had shown up in a, a Spider-Man comic. It's like, where the heck has he been? I'll probably explain about him more later. But, Slot has been on this book on and off for almost nine years now, since 2007. Basically, he came on the book just after the controversial One More Day storyline. And he came out at the start of Brand New Day. Some of the stuff was good. Some of the stuff was really boring. That could really put you to sleep. You should check out my early views of that. But I hope to God that Slot leaves after Dead No More. I mean, from the article I've read, Amazing Experiment is not scheduled to be relaunched again after a while. I mean, I've heard it's going to go through issue 24, but... I've heard a lot of people consider Amazing Spider-Man F, all the Spider-Man titles, to be the worst title on the shelves right now. I kind of agree with that, but not entirely. I mean, there is some good stuff in the most recent issues. Like, the first arc was really good. I enjoyed it. Second arc was crap. Second arc was just... Third arc that came after that, which was the follow-up to the first arc, really, really bad and totally unbelievable. And then you come to the most recent storyline. Okay, first you have the Zodiac. You, you, you bring in the Zodiac, a group of characters I don't think anybody had seen in years, a group of cool villains that were created by Roy Thomas back in the 70s. And what does Slot do with them? Make them extremely boring villains. If you talk to anybody who has read those issues when, when the Zodiac showed up, I mean, the early stuff, the first time, they, the first arc they showed up, they were kind of interesting. And then when they came back for that three-part follow-up, which happened after that filler storyline, 
it's like like people are like yeah he wrote cool cool villains to be absolutely boring and bring it back mr negative a character that had last shown up maybe a few months prior to this i mean he had not been gone that long and all of a sudden he brings him back I mean, you don't think good about the second story arc is they brought back Cloak and Dagger. At least they followed up on uh, what happened with them in Spider, uh, Spider Island. But some people will tend to forget that the last thing they showed up was not during Spider Island. It was during the first issue of Spider Island Team, which was not written by Dan Slott. Yes. It was such an awful storyline. You don't think good. You don't think there's, there's, there's like three good things about the second story arc. The artwork, the Return of Cloak and Dagger, and the Alex Ross covers. Yeah, that's all you could say that's actually good about that particular story arc. As a matter of fact, out of the entire 14 issues, the artwork is really good, and so is the Alex Ross covers. Those are two positive things you could say about Dan Slott's run. I mean, it's like this arc, it's like this volume suffered really good. A lot was was reversed what happened the previous storyline. Like, first five issues, really interesting, really enjoyable to read. With the exception of the whole thing with Human Torch issue three. Then you got awful storyline after that. And, and then two straight awful storylines. Like, first you have the Return of Mr. Negative. Then you have uh, the boring Zodiac storyline. Heck, I've even heard uh, Blue Goblin. He refers to this current storyline, Amazing Spider-Man, Dick Measuring Contest. Because that's essentially what these past three issues, well, not this most recent issue. The first two parts of this storyline have just been a Dick Measuring Contest between Peter Parker and Tony Stark. Is there a reason for this? Not that I've seen. And the book is getting a little, like, the most recent issue came out. It's a little bit better than the most recent issues. But another problem with this particular run, the biggest problem, is sitting on Regent for so long. Yeah, he sat in the storyline for so freaking long that we finally got a chance to see this character, what he can do. And the storyline is not very good. No, it isn't. Like... Also, you see the return of some, some certain Spider-Man villains. I'm like, where is this going? Is this going to be a storyline? I don't have any idea because you see the return of the most recent issue. You see the return of the Lizard, which no one's seen him in three years. You saw the return of the Rhino, which at the time when he returned, it had been three years since he's shown up. You see return of Noah Osborne, first time in a year anybody's seen the character. And apparently he's undone, apparently the plastic surgery he had gone under, that he had revealed to have gone through, has been undone and gone back to where he was before. Okay. But, oh yeah, and I also heard all in the solicits that apparently Dr. Octopus is supposed to come back. Okay. But here's the thing. In the past, let's say two years of the Amazing Spider-Man series, which major Spider-Man villains actually showed up in this in these particular issues? In the past, I'd say 22 issues. In the past 22 issues of the series, how many regular Spider-Man villains have actually physically made appearance and actually done something in the series? One, Electro. And that's it. Just freaking Electro. He has only he's only shown up for that one storyline, and hasn't shown up since then. It's like the other villains are like just oh let's just forget them and just use other people. So let's use Ghost and Iron Man villain to have him show up a couple times. You have the Zodiac show up, and well actually the only other Spartan villain actually has shown up is Mister Negative. But the Zodiac is not a Spartan group of Spartan villains. They're Avenger villains. Why the heck are they showing up in the pages of Spider-Man? And also apparently Scorpino. Apparently his real name is Vernon Jacob Fury. Okay. Does that mean he's related to Nick Fury Jr.? Completely unknown. Yeah. 
Also, apparently, Mockingbird has been dropped in this series as well. Like, she'd been a supporting character in the first arc, and then, okay, let's just forget about her because she's got an ongoing series now. Okay. Uh, Nick Fury showed up a couple times since the first story arc, and he's not been seen since then. It's like Slot has made Amazing Spider-Man purposely the worst, one of the worst titles Marvel has in the shelves right now. You can agree or disagree with me on that. But there's some good and bad things about this particular run. A lot more bad stuff. Not much good. I mean, probably the only reason people are still buying this book is because two reasons. It's Spider-Man and the Alex Ross covers. Yeah. I'm hoping the book gets better. I am really hoping that. And that's all I want to say about that. And slot please for the sake of the fans after dead no more please get off amazing spider-man you've been on this book long enough at the rate you're going at you're gonna break stan lee's run break his record of how many issues you can write for amazing spider-man i mean at this point you probably get close but not that close I mean, I think that's your goal, is to break his record. Mm. And you're like, what, 17 issues? You're like 18 issues away from breaking the record? It's a possibility. I don't know. But a lot of people want to see you leave this title. A lot of people. I would say almost every single person who's still reading Amazing Experiment really wants you to leave this title. I would never stop reading the title. Because nostalgic value. Okay? But slot. Get off the book. Focus on Silver Surfer. You do a great job with that book. Even though you haven't written that many issues for Silver Surfer, just stay there. Get off Music Spider-Man. A lot of people want you to really leave that book. I mean, your early stuff was really good. I would say from 2007 to 2012, that was a good era. Those first six years were good. But the past... Four years have been bad. Really bad. And people want you to lead the book. Really badly. I'm surprised no one has sent you death threats yet. I know Nick Spencer got death threats when uh, when he uh, when he re revealed that Steve Rogers was a Hydra agent. And people called for him to get removed. And... I personally want to send him death threats, but I didn't like the whole idea of that. But at least at least he's not doing that for Spider-Man. At least he's not outing him as gay or something. He just... He, it's like... This title is called Amazing Spider-Man. The only character he does write is Spider-Man himself. As for everybody else, oh, let's just... Oh, uh, let's develop this, develop that. It's like he does not know what to do with the title anymore. He's been on the for way too long, and it's time for him to go. Hand off the gauge, who actually is doing a better job with the Civil War time, Civil War Two Amazing Spider-Man miniseries. That is actually better than the main, than the main title. Yeah, that's better because the supporting characters are actually getting some development. Something you're failing at when it comes to Amazing Spider-Man. Okay, but that's my opinion. You can agree, disagree with that in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and give me a, give me a like if you like this video. Okay, so see you all next time. Where I'm hoping to do, I'm still gonna do that uh, that 27th episode of X Men Classics. I'm gonna review um, issues 57, 59. I'm gonna do the, which is the return of the Sentinel stuff. I just wanted to get this off my chest. Okay. But uh, until I see you in the next video, bye.